So the question whether ADCs in general have uh, have an ILD as a class effect or whether it relates to specific agents is I don't think not fully clear. I do believe we see some ADCs with a higher prevalence and incidence of, um, of ILD. But I think we need larger studies and further investigation to really figure out whether it's a class effect of, you know, ADCs in general, or whether some agents stand out. I would believe there's an underlying class effect of all ADCs, but some agents uh, might actually be associated with a higher rate of um, IOD, similar to what we know with EGF receptor targeted agents, a, a small molecule EGF receptor inhibitors versus antibodies against the EGF receptor, um, which can all together induce uh, ILD but there's a hint that uh, the antibodies might actually have a higher incidence of ILD. I've had patients who were on ADCs and presented with ILD. Fortunately, none of my patients actually had uh, life-threatening complications, but I've seen patients who develop patchy bilateral uh, interstitial infiltrates on scans. And this is a, definitely a, something that I'm very alert to. And uh, the next step, of course, is withholding the treatment and depending on the severity of the symptoms, starting with glucocorticoid, uh, so with steroids, although the value of steroid treatment is not quite um, you know, validated, so it's more anecdotal experience that we have, but it's definitely not a mistake to withhold the drug, which is clear, and then start with some steroids. We talk about predisposing factors, putting patients at risk for ILD. I've personally not observed anything that is consistent. I could imagine that pre- uh, uh, pre-existing radiation therapy or prior radiation therapy to the chest can be disposing, uh, predisposing factors because that's been shown in other studies that even when you uh, have patient with radiation therapy for lung cancer, for instance, when you give data certain agents like gemcitabine, there might even be a recall effect, uh, fibrotic uh, transformation of the lung in the area that was radiated. So prior radiation therapy is definitely something that I'm, which I would be worried about prior lung toxic uh, chemicals like, for instance, leomycin, which no can cause lung injury. It's also something that uh, I would be concerned about. Um, so, but, and, but otherwise, you know, I'm not aware of any specific predisposing factors that would patients at higher risk for ADC in particular, uh, for ILD in particular for patients with ADCs. When we talk about the symptoms that patient experience, the signs that make us kind of work up the, uh, suspicion for ILD, it comes in various forms and shapes. A lot of patients are asymptomatic when they come and we see patch infiltrates on scans, CT scans. And we're surprised actually by the findings, get a call from radiology, say, hey, patient might have an infection or some interstitial lung disease related to some toxic or autoimmune effect or hypersensitivity effect uh, due to medication. And those patients would be classified as grade one, you know, and because they might be asymptomatic we discontinue the treatment and follow these patients unless they develop symptoms, you know, which is mainly uh, cough, some shortness of breath upon exertion. What I will I do, I, I let my patients walk with a, a pulse ox, you know, uh, um, continuous check, you know, when they are in my, my clinic. I actually had a patient yesterday where we had to do this and he desaturated nicely from resting room air uh, oxygenation of uh, 95% to 87% when he just walked up and down the hallway. And this, of course, something that then is more serious. These are grade one and then later grade two, uh, grade two and grade three situations where patients might need oxygen. Um, so those are things we, we use to identify the severity of uh, the uh, ILD, um, how much it affects activities of daily living of patients and how much or whether or not we need glucocosteroids, for instance, on board. Uh, so it's a clinical diagnosis in combination with the imaging uh, scans that we that we see. Um, there are various reports of using bronchial alveolar lavages, you know, BALs, to see whether there's an infectious complication underlying. The BALs normally do not contribute a lot to the ILD diagnosis. So it's really a clinical diagnosis plus the imaging uh, findings. Other oncologists need to be aware of the incidence of ILD, the severity of ILD, and the association of ILD with certain drug classes and uh, like and ADCs, like EGF antibodies, like certain chemotherapies. So I think we need to create more awareness because ILD can be a serious complication. We need to identify these symptoms early, be aware of patients' cough, 
soft shortness of breath when they talk about fungal surgeon. And again, right now, a lot of the coronavirus epidemic discussions go in very similar directions. So these patients need to be worked up for infection, but also for potential drug-induced ILD. So creating awareness of this side effect currently and hopefully in future, even more commonly used agents is very important. 